affirmative, have a look at the umbilical. We're bringing it back up. We're bringing up the umbilical. We're having difficulty with the tension of the umbilical. Can you see it? Affirmative. Okay, keep going. The level is going to go up a little and I will compensate. You tell me if I need to add a bit more or not. Historically, Hydrocast was created in 1977. Originally, the main activity was cave diving, and then the activity diversified and Hydrocas started working mainly for Electricité de France dams for rope access works as well as confined area works inside pipelines, then in diving for anything that required inspection or maintenance of the dams. We are here at the Grand Maison Dam, at 1,700 meters altitude, between the mountain ranges of Beldon and Grand Rousse. This development was built at the end of the 1970s and completed in 1985. This is an embankment dam, built using recycled stone blocks from the region and clay. The reservoir behind me is very large due to its capacity of 140 million cubic meters of water. It is the largest hydroelectric power station in France, with a total capacity of 1,800 megawatts, which is the equivalent of two nuclear reactors. Its special feature is that it can produce energy with water as well as returning the water from the bottom to the top of the reservoir when there is an overcapacity of energy. Here, we're on the work site where robots can access and inspect tunnels and waterworks. We're working at critical depths, which is more extreme than classic diving with air techniques. That's why we practice the technique called saturation diving. The saturation diving system has many advantages. Our client can maintain its water levels and continue uninterrupted service, and for us, it allows us to carry out our work quickly. Divers go under compression to the depth determined by their working conditions. The divers can manage to work for six hours each shift. And comparing this with classical diving, we start decompression when the work's completed. On this contract, we undertake four dives in four working days. And we also have five days of decompression. It means that on this particular project, because of the depth of 105 meters, we have more decompression than work. In this case, we're going to a depth of 100 meters. If we were using classic diving techniques, we couldn't do this, and we would need several stages of decompression to allow the inner gases we've breathed in to be eliminated from the tissues. 
This would mean that if we were sending someone down to 100 meters in classical diving, that diver would have to decompress for hours and hours, and he wouldn't be effective during that time. And the system in place at the surface would have to be as suitable as what we have here now. Here we can just dive as requested. We have no compression problems. We have no compression issues anymore because compression takes place in one go, basically when we are at the bottom. The advantage for the divers is physiological and the good thing is we can be ready straight away. This technique was developed in the 1960s by the French firm called Comex. They were the world leaders in industrial diving. Deep diving techniques mainly originated for oil and offshore companies that we have adopted in terms of equipment, personnel and knowledge. Now we have developed this knowledge to work on the dams. There must be two or three ULIS equipment like this one in Europe. It's portable and modifiable. The advantage of our system is that it can be easily transported by trucks in containers. This can be useful to get onto sites with difficult access, such as this dam we are at the moment. With saturation techniques, we are equipped to go to depths of 200 meters, and we recruit divers who are class 3 qualified, experienced and trained for those depths. So it is a very small community of divers, knowledgeable and professional, who are capable of doing this work. OK then, have a good one. Yeah, see you later. Take it easy. When you do this type of work, you have to be conditioned yourself before you go under. You need to know where you're going, who you are with, and above all, you need to be able to switch off your brain when the door closes and you're undergoing compression. You can't have any stress. You must have mutual trust. When you know the other guy well, which is the case here, when you've worked together a lot, which is also the case, then you know the other guy's reactions, and then there is no need to speak. If you know him and trust him, then everything is a piece of cake. Gate number four, open. Four, open. Gate number six, open. Supplying Bellman. Six, open. Gate number seven, closed. We are checking the watertight door. Okay, it's working. We're going to unclamp the turret.
it's okay, not bad here. Okay, we stop here, we'll see after. Philippe, before you go, can you confirm two things? I think I have seen the ballast positions. Are they low enough? Can you see that? Okay, from where you are, with the help of the Bellman water pipe behind you, can you see the grill? Negative. Okay, so we take the guide rope to go towards the gate. For this project, we have to open a small gate on the water power intake. It's a one meter high barrier, approximately 60 centimeters wide. Once we've opened it, we are going to help the camera and sonar equipped robot. It's going to go through the gate and inspect several hundreds of meters of tunnels and survey for any faults, if any. Also, inspecting the concrete and metal structures. 30 or 35? 3 3.5. 3.0. 3 centimeters. Yes, okay, 3 centimeters. Now he's measuring the width of the bar, like this. Okay, you're measuring the width of the bar. Underwater, or rather in the water, we actually provide the same service that people can see on the surface. It could be building work, assembly work, demolition, inspection. For oil companies, it could be fitting a pipeline. Anything you can see on the surface, well, we can do the same thing underwater. So we adapt the work. We try to minimize the procedure, but the basics are the same. If you have to pour concrete on the surface, well, we can also pour concrete underwater. It's great to work with the diving helmets. It's the technical side of the work. On diving techniques, we are not doing anything more than a leisure diver. The diving is just a means to get to the work site. So we are not doing anything different than a leisure diver. Work is work. We're not looking at the fish. Anyway, we can't see anything. Most of the time, we can't see anything at all. We are here to work. The clients expect results. Very often, an improvement in production. So when you've got to go, you've got to go. We don't just send anybody to any depths without a very specified job. When you are at the end of the water pipe, you are on your own to do the work. You can get assistance from the surface. There is a safety diver. Procedures are clear. But the one who works at the bottom is on his own. Then, experience does the rest. Now talking about decompression stages, just to give you an idea, when we go down 100 meters, we need about 100 hours to decompress, which is actually longer than the astronauts would take to come back to Earth from space. Nous 
Today, we are nearly at the end of the project. The diving part went well. We have surveyed the tunnels, they are in very good condition. So we are satisfied with the way it went. Ah, ah, ah.